And now here we have, there was that first day of strikes and the warning we were concerned about that we gave was, this is now going to turn into a war where this is not just a one-time event where the U U.S. bombs Yemen. We're going to keep now bombing Yemen. And Iran is involved in Yemen. There's a lot of regional escalation possibilities, especially with Israel and Gaza and Israel and uh, Hezbollah and, and Lebanon and Israel bombing Syria and the U.S. bombing Iraq. We're really on the brink of a regional war. And if we're going to do that, we should at the very least have a debate in Congress about what this is going to be and what the purpose of this is. And yet there's none of that. Here is the New York Times with the headline that tells part of the story. U.S.-led strikes leave Yemen back on the brink of war. Yemen's Houthi militia, shaped by years of civil war, says that it welcomes a battle with the United States and that strikes will not stop its Red Sea attacks. Quote, for nearly a decade, Yemen has been at war, pummeled by a Saudi-led military coalition, supplied with American bombs in an effort to defeat the Houthis, a once scrappy tribal militia backed by Iran that has evolved into the de facto government in northern Yemen. The coalition expected swift victory. Instead, hundreds of thousands of people have died from fighting, hunger, and disease. And since the coalition pulled back several years ago, partly because of international pressure, the Houthis have only deepened their grip on power. Three weeks ago, the U.N. announced a potential, quote, roadmap to peace for Yemen. Now, Yemeni's worried that instead of the war quieting down, it is entering a new, even more complicated phase. Just as I said, the U.S. has started its own involvement in a new war in Yemen. The Saudi-led coalition's bombing campaign and blockade against the Houthis has already made Yemen one of the world's worst humanitarian crises. Analysts and aid organizations have warned that any further escalation as a result of the recent strikes will only deepen Yemen's economic woes, increasing fuel and food prices, and worsening hunger. The strikes on Friday in Yemen sent, quote, a very clear message that Britain and the United States would act to keep shipping lanes open. David Cameron, Brit David Cameron British Foreign Secretary, told NBC, saying they show that, quote, if warnings aren't heeded, consequences will follow. Isn't that the kind of thing that we're supposed to debate through our representatives in Congress? We're issuing warnings to them. If they don't abide by the warnings, we're going to then go to war with them. Quote, still, the Western attack is likely to, quote, increase anti-Americanism in Yemen and bolster the Houthis' popularity as the group capitalizes on Yemeni opposition to foreign intervention, said Abram Jalal, a Yemeni non-resident scholar at the Middle East Institute. Some American allies in the region, including Qatar and Oman, had warned the United States that bombing the Houthis could be a mistake, fearing that it would do little to deter them and would deepen regional tensions. They have argued that focusing on reaching a ceasefire in Gaza would remove the Houthis' stated impetus for the attacks. Now, there are arguments on both sides, I suppose you could say. The Yemenis haven't killed anybody, but they have attacked ships, commercial ships, linked to countries they blame for the destruction of Gaza, trying to impose a price on the countries at war in Gaza, and it has affected various prices and supply chain issues. So there's an economic cost to what the, um, the Houthis are doing, but they haven't killed anybody. They haven't killed any American service members. Two Navy SEAL soldiers died last week when they were trying to interdict a ship, a ship that they said carried Iranian weapons to Yemen. It's ironic that the argument against the Houthis is they're terrorists because they're interfering in the free flow of uh, commercial shipping while the U.S. is interdicting ships like we do all the time. Not in our waters, but in international waters that we say are bringing weapons to Iran. Obviously, the United States sends weapons all over the world. Four days after that New York Times article, this was yesterday, U.S. CENTCOM this is on January 17th, tweeted the following, U.S. CENTCOM strikes Houthi terrorist missile launchers. And you notice they just throw that word terrorist around. That's supposed to make everyone feel good about it. Applaud the Biden administration. Oh, we're attacking terrorists. That's always good. Again, the Houthis live in a country, Yemen, that has been devastated by Saudi, American, and British bombing. But uh, apparently there are the terrorists Whoever is the most powerful country gets to wield who that, that term and who, who it applies to. 
And here is CENTCOM describing the escalation of this conflict that, again, the Biden administration has not gone to Congress in order to gain its authorization to do. Quote, in the context of ongoing multinational efforts to protect freedom of navigation and prevent attacks on U.S. and partner maritime traffic in the Red Sea, on January 16th at approximately 6 o'clock p.m., that's last night, U.S. Central Command forces conducted strikes on 14 Iran-backed Houthi missiles that were loaded to be fired in Houthi-controlled areas in Yemen. These missiles on launch trails present, presented an imminent threat to merchant vessels and U.S. Navy ships in the region and could have been fired at any time, prompting U.S. forces to exercise their inherent right and obligation to defend themselves. Now, this is an argument designed to suggest the Biden administration has the ability to strike Yemeni targets without congressional approval. There's no emergency nature to any of this. These strikes had been planned and threatened for weeks. And obviously, after the first strike, the Biden administration, knowing it was going to do more, could have gone to Congress as well. Just because the U.S. military says we're only bombing Iran-backed missile sites, these missile sites can be used to attack us, doesn't make it true. I hope this doesn't offend anybody, but many times the U.S. military has issued false statements about what and who they were bombing. So many times, in fact, one of the revelations from the so-called drone papers that we were able to publish when I was still at The Intercept was that in nine, for nine out of the ten people that Obama's drone programs killed, the U.S. government had no idea the identity of those they were killing. And yet if you tracked the U.S. drone strikes where they didn't have any idea who they were killing with how the media reported it based on what the Pentagon told them, you can find in AP and Reuters and the New York Times, they would say, Drone strikes kill 14 al-Qaeda militants, even though no one had any idea the identity of those being killed. So, of course, CENTCOM is going to say, oh, we're only bombing scary, threatening, Iran-backed missile launchers. That doesn't make it true. And even if it is true, it doesn't obviate the need for congressional approval. Quote, these strikes, along with other actions we have taken, will degrade the Houthis' capabilities to continue their reckless attacks on international and commercial shipping in the Red Sea. Quote, the actions by the Iranian-backed Houthi terrorists continue to endanger international mariners and disrupt the commercial shipping lanes in the southern Red Sea and adjacent waterways, said General Michael Eric Carrilla, U.S. CENTCOM commander. Quote, we will continue to take action to protect the lives of innocent mariners, and we will always protect our people. Now... Joe Biden was asked earlier today about these bombing missions in Yemen and specifically was asked whether or not all this bombing that he's now done, there's been four separate strikes in the last week, has succeeded in degrading the Yemeni ability to attack ships in the Red Sea. And here's what Biden said. Are the airstrikes in Yemen working? Well, when you say working, are they stopping the Houthis? No. Are they going to continue? Yes. He said, when you ask me, are they working? No, they're not working to prevent the Houthis from attacking ships. But are they going to continue? Yes. No, well, obviously, the question is, if they're not working, why are they going to continue? Those would be the kind of questions that he would have to answer, or who's ever making these decisions would have to answer if there was a debate in Congress, if Congress were calling these people before these committees to ask them these questions. What is the purpose of this bombing campaign? Is there a strategy behind it? Given how adept and experienced these Houthi fighters are from years of bombing by Saudi Arabia with the help of the US and the British, seems like they know pretty well how to hide their missile launchers and their other military assets. Are we just bombing madly with no real benefit? There are obviously costs to this bombing, we're increasing anti-American sentiment in the region, we're strengthening the Houthis. These are the kinds of debates we would be having. We would be having a clear explication of war strategy, of when this bombing campaign would be over. But because there's no involvement on Congress, it's just something that Joe Biden is doing for reasons he's really not bothering to explain to the public except with these propagandistic pronouncements throwing the word terrorist around and Iran around. I mean, if that's something that convinces you that the government wars are justified 23 years after the war in Iraq and the, all the war, the war on terror, where all those words were constantly thrown around, terrorists and war on terror and Iran and all of that. 
then I don't think you're thinking very skeptically about pronouncements by the government. Thanks for watching this clip from System Update, our live show that airs every Monday through Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern, exclusively on Rumble. You can catch the full nightly shows live or view the backlog of episodes for free on our Rumble page. You can also find full episodes the morning after they air across all major podcasting platforms, including Spotify and Apple. All the information you need is linked below. We hope to see you there.